dull knives are the absolute worst. But I will take any dull knife and put a razor sharp edge on it so you won't have to hack or try to saw your ingredients when prepping your food. I sharpen knives, cleavers, machetes, and much more. Shoot me a text, WhatsApp, or give me a call for more information on how you can get your knives shinar. Bottom line is we're gonna make you a better person. You're gonna be healthier and fitter than you were before. We currently have the RSAT program up and running. It's a residential substance use treatment treatment program. That's a federally funded program, um, and it's it's recognized nationwide because they're provided in the other uh, Department of Corrections all over the nation. Uh, we provide that service for about 17 inmates, but there's, uh, of course, uh, criteria for that. You have to have uh, release within 12 to 18 months so that we can work with you for six months while you're in the RSAT program and then six months after care outside, which we provide at New Beginnings. We have two proposals. One, uh, residential, that six months prior to them leaving or finishing their sentence, and a general education program that everyone can avail themselves to and uh, should while they're waiting disposition of their cases or just waiting for their sentence to move along until they get to that six-month program where they may be able to go to our SAT residentials. I'm actually a two-time federally convicted felon. I served my last sentence. I served eight years in federal prison. And when I got out, I can honestly say it's really, really difficult for anybody getting released from prison to get back in society. Um, no car, no food, can't even apply for food stamps, no housing. And we do have housing and it's with somebody that a lot of the families here in Guam, they're, they're cold, dependent on drugs and everything. If you're going back into that same house, you're setting the you're setting this person up for failure. Um, without my family, without my support, I. I don't know where I would be today. I was fortunate that I had family that supported me 100% and I've never been involved in, um, in the drug scene. But there's tons of people out there that, are, that don't have that support. Um, that's the reason why when they asked me to join this council, I, I joined because I believe recovery is very, very important. And without recovery, um, we're just going to be spinning our wheels. Uh, in recovery, first and foremost, for me personally, and then along with detection of, of uh, narcotics coming in, but recovery has to work hand in hand. The proposal is to beef up the uh, ability of uh, detection of drugs on Guam. Um, I understand we do not have any uh, canine 
um, animals currently uh, assigned to department, or I'm sorry, the Department of the Public, uh, Guam Police Department. So this is uh, one of the ways that uh, was that was being addressed. The Department of Corrections does not have any canine animals for detection, and from the Attorney General's office perspective, we do recognize that our supposedly secure facility is not secure as it relates to uh, entry of different types of drugs into that facility. So this was an effort by our law enforcement community, along with our governor's office and Lieutenant Governor Josh Tenorio to address that uh, particular issue. Uh, that's why we propose to have them all purchased under one uh, appropriation to customers. In our uh, grant uh, proposal, we had requested for four dogs and supply four dogs to our partners at GPD and four dogs as well to uh, the Department of Corrections. Um, I'm aware that uh, the police department uh, has a trainer certified and that uh, upon their acquisition of the uh, four canines, they'll be capable of uh, taking the dogs and uh, moving them into operational state. And we'll find the personnel to assign to them and uh, we'll move from that, uh, we'll move from that uh, arrangement. Our most critical department here, if we want the success of Guam Behavioral, we have to stop the drugs getting into that facility. And from my mind and my understanding, talking with the law enforcement experts, the drug dogs are the most economical and efficient method to stop the drugs coming in from that facility. And also to check the, not only the people that are going into it, but also the staff of the uh, Department of Corrections to make sure that we have no corruption within the organization. We need to ensure that uh, we shore up the imports, whether it's to the island, to DOC, to wherever, and then Guam Behavioral Health takes care of those who are in need in the treatment side. But it's very important, I believe, that we need to not just do treatment, or else we're never going to catch up and meet in the middle. So I'm very, very supportive of anything that helps uh, stop the import or the, the use, uh, because I mean, I can always, it's, it's difficult enough to get as many counselors and, you know, it, it's hard. I mean, we can never have enough treatment, special specialists, if we don't um, take care of the other side and try to get those drugs detected or stopped to come into the island or to the DOC or wherever. I don't want to sugarcoat it. Fentanyl is on the island. We know from talks with the chief, uh, Chief Ignacio, um, it's so deadly, and it's best that we arm our folks with not only for, for uh, those that they respond to, but it, it's definitely going to save lives. Um, what happens as part of our settlement, now we haven't secured it just yet, is we have the opportunity to get money, or in this case the option to get Narcan or <coughs> Naloxidone. Um, that will be happening later this year. The problem we have is GPD has in their stock, I don't know how many boxes the chief was telling us, um, available, but we have a local law that prohibits the carrying of the uh, naloxone unless you have a prescription available. So the bill that the speaker has introduced, uh, she's moving it along. We, we actually asked her for a little more time to submit testimony. We, we've already verbally, our office has verbally testified in favor of the bill and we continue to work on it. Um, so, uh, with regard to naloxone, we, we think we, we're, we're pretty sure we'll have enough to cover all of Guam, including some of the nonprofits. Um, we're going through that process with the speaker right now. And uh, I wasn't sure if they were going to continue to bring those in, but we did discuss with the Attorney General that, if I'm saying this correctly, friends, uh, Attorney Nishihira, what you're saying is that as part of the settlement, we, are, we can opt to get the drugs, I mean, or the Narcan, the naloxone itself, so they, they can obtain a, uh, um, hopefully a standard supply, right, because of the expiration date, and then that should be able to cover everybody.
dull knives are the absolute worst. But I will take any dull knife and put a razor sharp edge on it so you won't have to hack or try to saw your ingredients when prepping your food. I sharpen knives, cleavers, machetes, and much more. Shoot me a text, WhatsApp, or give me a call for more information on how you can get your knives shinar. that this environment is for anybody that wants to try something new. Um, whether it is CrossFit or powerlifting, we offer a safe space for someone who's never been athletically inclined to try something that they've never done before.